Lord be with you. I want to welcome you to the service of worship of Cedar Park First United Methodist Church. We're still in the season of Easter. I hope you've gotten that message. Easter is the great 50 days. It lasts for 50 days, and here we are the sixth Sunday. Uh, in two weeks, we're going to celebrate the 50th day. The Greek word for 50th is Pentecost, and I hope that you all will be here. That's the day that the church was born, according to Acts chapter 2. And we're all going to be wearing red, if you remember. So I keep telling you, on June the 5th, when we celebrate Pentecost Sunday, wear red or bright, fiery colors, oranges and yellows, and, and the brightest shade of red you can find, like Wanda Lack. Loves to wear red, don't you, Wanda? She's got her red on today. So she's our Pentecost poster child today, uh, two weeks from now. All right, so you have a worship bulletin. I hope also you'll find this registration pad somewhere on your row. That's always Appreciate it if you give us a record of your attendance, put your name down, if your email address has changed or you got a new telephone number, we always want to get that uh, from you as well. Uh, you have a worship bulletin, the inside back. Sergio always wants me to figure out how the inside, how do you get to the inside back? Well, there's a back page and inside that back page, you'll see information on the right hand side about the church. On the left hand side, there's a calendar of events or just thumb through your bulletin and you, until you get to this week at Cedar Park Church. We have some wonderful adult Sunday school classes right before uh, this service over there in the other building. Uh, there's a class studying uh, Paul's letter to the church in Rome. There's another class doing a video series on understanding the New Testament. They'd love to have you take part of that. There's also children's Sunday school as well at 945. Um, down at the bottom of that sheet, you'll see Project Transformation. Project Transformation is a program uh, that's put on by our Rio, Texas conference in uh, various locations, and it is happening this summer in Leander, at Leander United Methodist Church, just right up the road. They are looking for reading buddies. Uh, they're bringing about 60 uh, elementary school children uh, to the program coming from underserved neighborhoods. College students are interning in the program and working with these kids, but they're looking for adult reading buddies to read with a child for about 30 minutes or two children. Uh, you read to them, they read to you, and that way they work on their reading skills during the summer, and there's information about doing that. If you could just do that one day or a few days, they would greatly appreciate that because with 60 kids, each kid getting read to each day, they need hundreds of volunteers to do that. So information there about project transformation, about being a reading buddy. Later in the service, we'll be celebrating Holy Communion. All are welcome to the table. You'll come down the center aisle as directed by the usher. You'll be given a small fragment of bread that you may then either dip in the cup or take a smaller cup. Uh, there is an offering basket here for your regular or special offerings. And then if you take the smaller cups, there are bowls on either side to put your empties in and then return to your seats using the outer aisles. That's always appreciated. Let us now together worship God. Amen. I invite you to stand now if you're able and join me for the greeting. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let, all the praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For you have 
Join me now in singing, sing with all the saints in glory. Sing with all the saints in glory, sing the resurrection song. Death and sorrow, earth's dark story, to the former days belong. All around the clouds are breaking, soon the storms of time shall see. In God's likeness we awaken, know the everlasting peace. Oh, what glory far exceeding all that eye has yet perceived. Holiest hearts for ages pleading, never that full joy conceived. God has promised, Christ prepares it, there on high our welcome waits. Every humble spirit shares it. Christ has passed the eternal gate. Life eternal, heaven rejoices. Jesus lived, who once was dead. Join we now the deathless voices. Child of God, lift up your head. Patriarchs from the distant ages, saints all longing for their head. Prophets, psalmists, seers, and sages all await the glory given. Life eternal, oh, what wonders crowd on faith. What joy unknown when amidst earth's closing thunders saints shall stand before the throne. Oh, to enter that bright portal, see that glowing firmament. No, with thee, oh God immortal, Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. Let us pray. Gracious God, through a vision, you sent forth Paul to preach the gospel and call the women to the place of prayer on the Sabbath. Grant that we may be sent like Paul and be found like Lydia, our hearts responsive to your word and open to go wherever you lead us through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Let children come forward. Thank you. You can come up for any time and hand out money. I love it. Is that for the Holy Land? Oh, it's okay. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, turn around, I want to see you. Um, I have a secret for you. Yeah, I promise not to tell anyone. It's not on. I had a green light. It's got a green light. Okay, it's not my fault. <laughs> Finally, it wasn't me. <laughs> now is it on? Okay, good. All right, so we'll start over. I have a secret. I have to tell you. Can you keep a secret? Sure. Not tell anybody? Okay. Them. Look at them. They're not perfect. <laughs> Look at them. They're not perfect. Who loves them? Who loves them? God. Even though they're not perfect, so together we're going to start with that. We're going to say that to them. Look at them. One, two, three, we're going to yell, God really love. Ready? One, two, three. God loves you. Hey, you sound just like me. That's awesome. Wow. That's fabulous. I love it. So they're not perfect, 
and the year at the end of your school year and so you might be more aware than ever about grades and testing scores and I'm not as whatever as that person or this is uh, that they're, person they're going to party because your teacher's got to do the grades I know what's going on there <laughs> so you have three and a half days left and then you'll go into summer and you'll have all you'll see all kinds of things in media and on movies and and you'll hear people fussing and fighting and you're thinking I'm not as good as that person or I'm not that birthday. for your birthday because it's, it's in the school worst time, of the year. worst time of the year to have your birthday in school okay I have my birthday in December and Kevin's is on Christmas so you don't win so <laughs> <laughs> so there are things out there that are lies that we hear and the media the commercials exploit it like if I just have this shampoo or I'll have prettier hair and then I'll finally be pretty or if I have this career if I make this money this person makes more money so they have more value than this person who can't work right we hear those kind of things all the time right are they true they're not true. They are lies. They are flat out lies. Every person sitting here, every person out there is beloved and belongs to God. And it does not matter if they get their act together. It does not matter if they have been holding a grudge for a million years. It does not matter if they are the prima ballerina and can dance across the stage and everybody goes, wow, right? It doesn't matter because everybody is loved by God. And it's really important to remember that's what this church does and why your parents bring you here to remind us that this place, that we belong to God. And whatever's going on out there, whatever's going on in our hearts, God's already there working on it. Because if we don't and we listen to all the ick, then we can go down trails that lead to really bad and evil things in the world, right? And we've seen some of that lately. They have no hope. And so what we do, imperfect as we are, we carry that hope into the world. So we're going to tell them again, really loud. Look at them. Our chicks will say it too. One, two, three. God loves you. One, two, three. God loves you. <laughs> All right, let's pray. Dear God. Dear God. Thank you. Thank you. For loving me loving me just as I am just as I am my ucky stuff my ucky stuff my not so fun stuff my not so fun stuff my brilliant stuff my brilliant stuff all is in your love all is in your love help me help me to help others to help others love who you made them to love who you made them to in Jesus name we pray in Jesus name we pray amen amen thank you dear <laughs> Oh, Pilgrim, come on up. Come on up. Let's gather right over here. Okay, so I guess you all probably have not heard that we've got some people going to the Holy Land. Have you heard that yet? <laughs> now, y'all slide on down here because people are going to need to see the screen. Come on down here. And so... Uh, We've got the Leander track coach going with them, Gigi. 20 have... years. Woo! Thank you, Gigi. <laughs> and we've got her daughter and her son, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> and Kevin is We're taking. We're going to confuse people. Kevin is all taking. Uh, yeah. Kevin is taking his niece, Spring, and Sean is taking Abby, and Suzette is taking Maddie and her son Ben and Ben's friend Eric, and then we've got the. Uh, the Pflugerville Youth Minister, Misty, and her son going as yep. well. So they're, they're missing. And so what we want to do is we want to ask a blessing on these people uh, as they make their pilgrimage to the Holy Land. What are you all most looking forward to? Somebody tell me. What are they most looking forward to? Baklava. Baklava. <laughs> yes. You get that in Greece. <laughs> okay. I mean, how about places to go? Any, any places you want to go to, Jesus? The Jordan. The Jordan? Okay. Really excited to go to Israel. Really excited to go to yeah. Israel? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else excited to go to Israel? Raise your hand. 
Everybody <laughs> raise your hand. <laughs> okay, so now the names of all these people are printed in your bulletin, both here on this page and also on the prayer concern page. And so I ask you to take your bulletins home and be praying for these people. They leave Saturday and return on, on Pentecost Sunday the 5th. So please keep all of these pilgrims in your prayers. And I'm going to offer a, a prayer. When you, join, when you start worship next week, you will be landing in Israel at that moment. I'm going to say a prayer now for these pilgrims, and then we're going to add a blessing uh, for all of them. So let's pray together. Faithful God, you kept Abraham and Sarah in safety throughout the days of their pilgrimage. You led the children of Israel through the midst of the sea. And by a star, you led the wise men to the infant Jesus. Protect and guide all these pilgrims who are traveling to the Holy Land. Make their way safe and their homecoming joyful. And bring us all at last to our heavenly home, where you dwell in glory with your Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And now I invite you to offer this blessing that was printed on the screen to these pilgrims. God bless the path on which you go. God bless the earth beneath your feet. God bless your destination, the Holy Land. God be a smooth way before you, a guiding star above you, a keen eye behind you, this day, this night, and forever. Amen. And I want you all to do me a special favor after this service, when we sing the Shalom song, you all scoot back to the uh, lobby where everybody can wish you well on your journey, especially the track coach of Leander, you all. Woo! <laughs> now, Kevin, you all don't know this, but he used to be 300 years ago. He was the church secretary. And Sean is the associate youth director with, with Suzette. So we've got some really high caliber adults going on this trip with Jesus. With Jesus. <laughs> anyway, thank you all. God bless you all. Thank you, hon. Oh, yes. yes. Yeah, we're, we're, Sean and Abby can step in the other, in the youth room. Abby, in the youth room. As we prepare to hear today's scripture lesson, I invite you to pray with me now the prayer for illumination. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy again. Spirit, um, that as the scriptures are read and, you and your down, word like proclaimed, an and we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Second. Amen. Today's scripture lesson comes from the book of Acts, the 16th chapter. Hear this word. During the night, Paul had a vision. There stood a man of Macedonia pleading with him and saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. When he'd seen the vision, we immediately tried to cross over to Macedonia, being convinced that God had called us to proclaim the good news to them. We set sail from Troas and took a straight course to Samothrace, the following day to Neapolis, and from there to Philippi, which is a leading city of the district of Macedonia, and a Roman colony. We remained in the city for some days. On the Sabbath day, we went outside the gate by the river where we supposed there was a place of prayer. And we sat down and spoke to the women who had gathered there. A certain woman named Lydia, a worshiper of God, was listening to us. She was from the city of Thyatira and a dealer in purple cloth. The Lord opened her heart to listen eagerly to what was said by Paul. When she and her household were baptized, she urged us, saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come and stay at my home. And she prevailed upon us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. All right, so we've got these people going to the Holy Land. In a few days, they will be taking this very long journey, but I've got to tell you, they've got nothing really on the Apostle Paul. Paul was what you might call an extreme traveler. It's hard to comprehend the extraordinary hardships, the physical challenges that Paul undertook in his travels that covered thousands upon thousands of miles. We catch a glimpse of what he went through in his second letter to the church in Corinth. He wrote, five times I have received 
the 40 lashes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I received a stoning. Three times I was shipwrecked. For a night and a day I was adrift at sea. On frequent journeys in danger from rivers, danger from bandits, danger from my own people, danger from Gentiles, danger in the city, danger in the wilderness, danger at sea, danger from false brothers and sisters, in toil and hardship, through many a sleepless night, hungry and thirsty, often without food, cold and naked. Now I'm hoping that our pilgrims to the Holy Land experience none of this, right? But we just don't think very often about what it cost for the church to come into being. You and I sit here comfortably on a Sunday morning without a thought for the price that was paid for us to be Christians. Paul's last imprisonment was in distant Rome, the furthest point he reached, and there he was put to death by the emperor Nero. But today we're joining Paul in mid-journey. He had been preaching and establishing churches in Asia Minor, which is present-day Turkey. He'd been doing that for several years, and at the point where our story begins, Paul is preparing to open up a new mission field in the northern regions of Asia Minor. But Paul had, in the middle of the night, he had a vision. A Macedonian man was pleading with him, saying, come over to Macedonia and help us. How often do we have our hopes set in one direction and then discover that God has something else in store for us? Now, Macedonia is not in Asia Minor. It's in Europe. It was the illustrious homeland of Philip of Macedon, the father of Alexander the Great. So when Paul heeded the call, he and his mission team made this immense journey. They sailed north from Troas off the western coast of Turkey and then along the Aegean coastline of Greece to the island of Samothrace and then to Neapolis, the port city of Macedonia. When Paul got off the boat in Macedonia in Neapolis, the Christian gospel had set foot for the first time in Europe. The little team didn't stop long in Neapolis, but headed straight to Philippi, a leading city of the district of Macedonia and a Roman colony, Acts tells us. Philippi was an old town, formerly named Crinides. It had been rebuilt and renamed by Philip of Macedonia. It had some history, having been the scene, maybe you remember this from Shakespeare or something. It was the scene of the victory of Mark Antony and Octavian, later Augustus Caesar, over Cassius and Brutus in 42 BCE following the assassination of Julius Caesar. You can wake up now. (laughs) These were great events, right? Cassius, Brutus, Octavian, Mark Antony, but 91 years later, Nothing on that scale seemed to be happening when a little group of men led by a Jew from Tarsus came into town. No one took note of their presence as they quietly went to a local inn and began to take stock of the town to see where they might begin their evangelistic work. After a couple of days, they had the lay of the land. Normally, they would start by going to the local Greek-speaking synagogue. But evidently there was no real synagogue in Philippi because Acts tells us that on the Sabbath day, Paul went with his fellow missionary Silas to a place by the Ganges River outside the city gate where Jews might gather for Sabbath worship. And what did they find there? They found a group of women. And what did that mean exactly? It meant there wasn't a minion Have you ever heard that Hebrew word, a minion, then, as it remains today in Orthodox Judaism, is the minimum number of Jewish men that constitutes a quorum for worship. So no wonder there wasn't a proper synagogue in Philippi. They did not have ten men, a minion. Let's think about that for a minute. Here is Paul, whom 
some of us might regard as a woman hater because of the things he said about women, no women speaking publicly in church. Here is Paul, newly arrived on the continent of Europe. There are no Christian congregations in Europe. There are no Christians at all in Europe. Paul's been called by God to bring the gospel to the Gentile world. He has a clear sense of his mission to evangelize the whole continent of Europe. He's hoping to reach Rome and maybe even then go on to Spain. Paul had probably chosen Philippi as a place to begin because it was a Roman city of great distinction. But he finds himself outside the city walls at a little off the track, certainly non-elite spot along the river. Not a grand beginning for a new mission. It's not the town forum. It's not the amphitheater. It's not even a public space. It's off in the boondocks with a handful of women. So how do you think Paul felt? Should he just have turned around and said to his companions, this is not worth our time. Let's go back into town and find out what the powerful people are doing. But Paul doesn't do that. He has placed his trust in the Lord of the gospel and he knows that the power comes not from human beings but from God. He and the others go over to where the women are, they sit down with them and they begin to talk about one of whom they've never heard, the man of faraway Galilee, who was crucified under Pontius Pilate, put to death by the rulers of this age, but now raised in power and alive in the Holy Spirit as his good news spreads and brings new life into being. A woman was there listening to Paul, a God-fearing Gentile woman named Lydia. She felt her heart and mind being open to the message Paul was bringing. The Spirit of the Lord moved in her as she listened. And then Jesus Christ made himself known to her that day by the river. And she believed in him. And Lydia of Philippi became the first Christian in Europe. Now, who was this Lydia? Many of the early Christians were from the lower class. They were poor, slaves even, but Lydia was well-to-do. How do we know this? She was originally from Thyatira. She was a dealer in purple dye and purple dyed cloth. Maybe you know that this color was the most expensive of all. Purple dye was made by collecting thousands of marine snails and boiling them, a laborious, costly process, and so prosperous Roman senators had purple borders on their togas. Emperors and kings wore purple. And Lydia came over to Macedonia. She'd made that same long, arduous journey as Paul from Asia Minor to be a purple dye agent in Europe. She must have had plenty of money, plenty of gumption to do this, no doubt. She was, no doubt, a mover and a shaker. If there was a man in her life, we don't hear anything about him. And when Lydia became a Christian, her whole household was baptized along with her. And I'm not talking about her nuclear family either. I'm talking about her servants and her whole business organization being baptized. This is quite a woman. And the story is told as if it's the most natural thing in the world for a woman to have so much clout. Her distinction is not commented upon. Acts doesn't say, look, a new women's movement in Philippi. It just happens. We can readily imagine Lydia, I think. Executive women are like this, imperious, fearless, born leaders. They stand out in a crowd. They take charge. And it's no wonder then that the next thing that happens after her baptism is Lydia comes up to Paul and says, now, Paul, no more staying at that lousy inn from now on. You and Silas and the others come and stay with me. Was Paul put off by having such a powerful woman come up and tell him what they're going to do next? Well, he may have hesitated at first, but when he hears what more she has to say, he gives in at once. Acts tells us this. The Lord opened Lydia's heart to listen eagerly to what was said by Paul. When she and her household were baptized, she urged us, saying, If you have judged me, 
to be faithful to the Lord, come and stay at my home. And she prevailed upon us. In other words, Lydia's forcefulness was linked to her faith. Her desire to demonstrate the, the full heartedness of her commitment to Christ made it impossible for Paul to refuse. And so began that special relationship between Paul and the church he founded in Philippi, a relationship that just blazes brightly in almost every word of his letter to that church, words that have warmed the hearts of Christians for 2,000 years. By the time we meet the Philippian church in Paul's letters, the whole congregation had taken on the character of Lydia herself. It was the one church Paul could always count on their wholehearted love for him, and even more important, their love for the whole Christian mission gave Paul strength and courage to the very end of his life when he wrote the letter to the Philippians. The most dependable of all Paul's churches came about through the leadership, the gifts, and the devotion of this incredible woman, Lydia of Philippi. My friends of Cedar Park Church, the same spirit that worked through Lydia and brought about a tiny congregation on that riverbank 2,000 years ago can work through this church as well. At any moment, God can cause some small action of your own to become great in God's service. We may all not be Lydia's, but we can all play our part by loving the Lord and serving God's people. In thanksgiving for blessed Lydia and for the church that met in her house, let me close with these marvelous words that Paul wrote to his beloved Philippian congregation. I thank my God every time I remember you, constantly praying with joy in every one of my prayers for all of you because of your sharing in the gospel from the first day until now. I am confident of this, that the one who began a good work among you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. It is right for me to think this way about all of you because you hold me in your heart. For all of you share in God's grace with me, both in my imprisonment and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel. For God is my witness how I long for all of you with the compassion of Christ. And this is my prayer, that your love may overflow more and more with knowledge and full insight to help you to determine the things that truly matter so that in the day of Jesus Christ you may be pure and blameless, having produced the harvest of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. And let all God's people say, Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Three, two verses, three. We're going to sing as we center ourselves.
before I forget to tell you, I'm going to remind you that we are going to the Wailing Wall, and it is the tradition that you can insert prayers into the wall, written prayers. Um, it's considered one of the holiest places in the Israel faith. It is a remnant of the original temple. And if you want me to take those to you, for you, on your behalf, you can either email me, which is all over here, or there's prayer things in there. Get them in here, and they'll get them to me. So that is something, and you have six days to do that. <laughs> no. So um, <clears throat> that just as an ongoing, that's not something you have to share with a big group. That's just something if you want, um, I will take those, and they will be put in the wall, and when they fall out, they will be put in a cavern and be kept in that holy site for all time. All right, we want to lift up the Boker's brother-in-law. Bill is recovering from a successful open-heart surgery, so we're um, grateful for God's uh, steadfast in the midst of that. Um, Hyasis, who's at the 830 service, her brother has been having health issues but on the road to recovery, so we give thanks for that. Um, family and friends of Ruby Elite, 101 years old. Um, a friend of Carol Slater who passed away. So we give thanks for all that goodness that came through her long and loving life. And a joy to share with you, Cliff Burris, cancer is gone. Um, that's just a huge, huge joy and celebration. Um, he does have a tumor that's dormant right now, and so they're going to continue doing monitoring and doing the stuff that they do. But right now, cancer free. So for all of these, um, God, hear our prayers. How else shall we pray today? Sergio. So David's new job, John's birthday, and then Sarah's path forward. And for all of our graduates, all of our college students, all of those who are in the midst of transitioning, and there's a lot of it right now. I had to drive past UT and all the grads and all the things happening. Um, season of endings and beginnings that God would guide their steps. Lord, hear our prayers. So for Gigi's dad, who had a successful cancer processing and then in the process found more cancer, and so all the fears and scare that comes from that be brought to the peace of God, and that healing will happen. Lord, hear our prayers. So prayers for the last week of school. For the kids, for the teachers, for the janitors, everybody, um, all, all that, that God has gotten us through and that we could end on a high note for all those. Lord, yeah. hear our prayers. And you had another, you had two. What was the other one? I think so too. Oh, VBS, thank you. So prayers for VBS. So here's the thing, people. This may be the only God these kids get. It may be the only God that they get to experience the only time they come in a church. And so may God bring those children to us and may we step up and be the light of Christ to those children. Lord, yeah. hear our prayers. Oh, you have a recital. You're not smiling when you say that. So for Rachel and for all of those end of year performances, Maddie just finished a successful run at the Vortex Theater and I know volleyball tournaments have finished off and <coughs> Luke got second place in state for golf and so all of these end of year things, may God be present and calm your nerves so your training comes through. Lord, hear our prayers. My goodness, Kinsley turns nine, so the joy that comes from that beautiful, beautiful child. Lord, hear our prayers, and it's good to see you here. 
and the other. All right, let's center ourselves. God, you are, that could be the end of the prayer right there. You are. Help us to take in the reality of you. Help us to let it enter into the places we think are less than. Help us to accept our strengths and our weaknesses, knowing that in all of it, you use to proclaim your kingdom. Our imperfections, our failures are still a part of your story, your love present in all times and in all things. For those of us who are entering seasons of transition, we ask your steadfastness. We ask you open our ears and our hearts in our eyes that we can see what you would have us do, what path to take. For those of us who are in a season of quiet, a season of stillness, of doing less, we ask that you pour into us that we too may see and learn and take in your love and to be a light for you wherever we are. And then for those of us who are hurting physically, mentally, emotionally, financially, just hurting, we ask that you be a balm, a soothing ointment. Help us to let go of should'ves, would'ves, could'ves, and reach for what can be in you, in your kingdom. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. One more verse. Come, Spirit, come. Our hearts control. Our spirits long to be made whole. Let in words Guide every deed by this we worship and are free. Brenda Higgins is the director of our Vacation Bible School this summer, and she made a video that she wants you all to see about how you can help out. Hello, everyone. Let me introduce myself. My name is Brenda Higgins. I usually attend the 8.30 service. Carolyn Smith, Amanda Terrio, and I are here to announce that the Vacation Bible School is back. It will be different from previous years, but we believe it still will be very rewarding to the kids as well. This year, the theme will be Treasure Hunt VBS 2022. It will be a three-day event from June 14 to the 16th, 6 p.m. to 8.15 p.m. each day. Treasure Hunt invites the kids to arise and shine because the light of God's love has come and is shining on them. Our mission is to guide the kids in search of the infinite lantern. Our quest of God's light is based on Isaiah 61. Arise, shine. Your light has come. The Lord's glory has shone upon you. There are three interactive events, which is based on the theme of the day. The creation story from Genesis 1, 1 to 2, 9 shows God's light of love on all creation. Faith through the roof is day two from Luke 5, 17 to the 26, which shows God's light of faith by acting on who God is. And the final day, the lost parables from Luke 15 shows joy's light, God's light of joy when you share God's light together. 
Each day contains three stations that encompass the Bible story, craft, and recreation. Each station has a rotation schedule by each group. In addition, the day will be filled with music, snacks, and fun to reflect the day's session. Here is Josie and Leela and Terrio talk about their experience at previous VBS. Um, my favorite part of um, VBS is like doing the sports and breaking boards and karate and making doing goals and soccer and eating snacks. So one of my memories is um, inviting my friend Rebecca to come to VBS and I'm excited to um, be um, a helper in VBS so um, all the fun memories I had, um, they can have fun memories too. Cost for the VBS this year is $10 per child. Greater than two children, $25 per family. Registration and consent forms are available via the church website. There is going to be a maximum of 40 kids. There is no refund and we do not allow any walk-ins on the day of the event. We need your help. Volunteers are needed. There are many areas you can help. We need youth, we need safe gathering trained staff, we need help in setting up on June 13th, we need breaking down help on June 17th. All the sign up could be done via the church website, but we also made available sign up sheets in the front lobby of the church. Let's make this a safe, fun, and rewarding experience for the kids. Thank you. And we thank uh, Brenda, we thank Carolyn Smith and Amanda Terrio who are orchestrating this, but we're hoping that you will help us either by volunteering or providing snacks. There are two sign-up sheets in the lobby. You can also Hello, go online. Everyone. We're looking for volunteers to help with the children. We're also looking for help with the snacks. So you can be a part of that. It really does take a church to make a vacation Bible school happen. <clears throat> Today, we'll be singing our communion responses. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. is your son Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, take, eat, this is my body given for you, do this in remembrance of me. 
When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. 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 And now with the confidence of children of God, let us pray that prayer we are taught to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven. Because there is this one loaf, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of this one loaf. The bread that we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. The cup of blessing that we bless is a sharing in the blood of Christ. Bob, Suzette? The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. The blood of Christ. Amen. The blood of Christ. Amen. Will you come? Of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. 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 The 
body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Would you come with me? The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Let us pray. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I invite you to stand now if you're able and we'll sing our final hymn, Thine Be the Glory. Thine be the glory, risen, conquering Son. Endless is the victory, thou or death hast won. Angels in bright raiment roll the stone away, kept a folded grave clothes where the body lay. Thine be the glory, risen conquering sun. Endless is the victory, thou or death hast won. Lo, Jesus meets thee Risen from the tomb, lovingly greets thee, scatters fear and gloom. Let the church with gladness hymns of triumph sing. For our Lord now liveth, death has lost its sting. Thine be the glory, risen, conquering sun. Endless is the victory, thou or death hast won. No more we doubt the glorious prince of life. Life is not without thee, aid us in our strife. Make us more than conquerors, though the deathless love. Bring us safe through Jordan to thy home above. Thine be the glory, risen, conquering sun. Endless is the victory, thou or death hast won. Go in peace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forever. Amen. Holy Land Trip people, go to the lobby. We're going to sing our song of going forth, joining hands, touching elbows, whatever you prefer.